Nancy Pelosi and the mainstream media push a new Donald Trump lie on the American people, but Elon Musk of Twitter immediately refutes it. Vladimir Putin remains president of Russia. AG Letitia James of New York City twists the knife in Trump's back and threatens to confiscate his businesses and his assets. And Donald Trump's lawyer, Steve Sadow, says he knows exactly how to get Fonnie Willis off of the case. And even if he can't, Donald Trump will win on appeal. I'll explain it all tonight. Thank you guys so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out. So thank you so much. Happy Monday, everybody. I hope everyone had a great weekend. With the election time getting closer, the media is once again starting to promote anti-Donald Trump hoaxes. Late last week, major news outlets were screaming from the rooftops that former President Donald Trump was calling for a bloodbath if he didn't win the 2024 election. However, this couldn't be further from the truth. During a rally, <clears throat> excuse me, in Dayton, Ohio, Donald Trump was speaking on what would happen to the U.S. automobile industry if he were not reelected. Donald Trump stated another Joe Biden term would cause a bloodbath, meaning that many jobs would be lost if car manufacturers decide to send their production lines overseas. Now, despite the very clear context, many reputable media outlets twisted Donald Trump's words to make it seem like he was calling for violence, that he was calling for civil war or an uprising in the streets. Now, unfortunately, this deceptive message was echoed by a number of uh, well-known members of Congress. During an interview on CNN, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi stated, we just have to win this election because he, Trump, is even predicting a bloodbath. What does that mean? He's going to exact a bloodbath? There's something wrong here. So CNN was allowing Nancy Pelosi to come on and tell lies, unequivocal lies that Donald Trump was calling for violence. Now, in his typical fashion, Donald Trump defended himself against these baseless claims. In a new social media post, Donald Trump stated, the fake news media and their Democrat partners in the destruction of our nation pretended to be shocked at my use of the word bloodbath, even though they fully understood that I was simply referring to imports allowed by crooked Joe Biden, which are killing the automobile industry. There soon won't be any cars made in the USA unless I'm elected president. So he was obviously not talking about civil war or violence. Again, they're trying to conjure up January 6 images of attacks. But Elon Musk showed up on Twitter today with all of the receipts, and he defended Donald Trump in two different ways. First, Elon Musk showed the exact video footage of Donald Trump saying that the automobile industry of the United States would be a bloodbath. So he showed those receipts. Second, Elon Musk said he had a great private meeting with Donald Trump. And during that time, Donald Trump neither asked him for money or an endorsement. They talked about business and how great our country is. However, I do expect Elon Musk in the future to push people to vote for Donald Trump because he knows that Joe Biden has been an absolute disaster for our country. Now, at the same rally in Ohio, Donald Trump sparked another controversy when he labeled the people who have been jailed for their participation in January 6 as hostages. In response, former Vice President Mike Pence called Trump's remarks unacceptable and stated, I think it's very unfortunate at a time that there are American hostages being held in Gaza that the president or any other leader would refer to people that are moving through our justice system as hostages. Look, we can agree that there were bad actors on January 6th. However, the majority of people were not bad actors. They were caught up in police grenades, percussion grenades, flares, attacks from the police. So yeah, it got ugly and uh, I'm not denying it. But the majority of people that have been arrested and hunted down by the FBI 
were simply given misdemeanors. Now, there is also people in solitary confinement that have yet to receive their time in court. And in the United States, you are entitled to a speedy trial. And these people are being left to languish in basically a dungeon in Washington, D.C. All right, now I have some huge stories, but first, 63 seconds from today's video sponsor. If you Google yourself these days, you're likely to find your private information on public listings. Data brokers are making a fortune selling your information to robocallers, spammers, and others that wish to do you harm. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's video sponsor, Aura. Aura can identify data brokers exposing your information and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Now, brokers legally have to remove your information, but they make it almost impossible to do so. So let Aura handle this for you. You can try Aura for free for two weeks using my link down below. Now, Aura does much more to protect you and your family from online threats. It's easy to set up and you don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental control, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft protection, and more. With Aura, you get all of this for one affordable price. Don't let these scumbags exploit you and profit off your private information. Go to Aura.com forward slash Steven to start a two-week free trial today. I'll leave a link in the video description and the pinned comment. Now, seriously, it's free for two weeks. Go check it out. Donald Trump got terrible news today. Let me explain. He had to tell the New York federal court system that he is unable to produce a bond covering the $454 million fine from Judge Arthur Engeron and Attorney General Letitia James for fraud he never committed to companies that were never injured. Now, 30 plus companies refused to help him unless Donald Trump liquidates his assets and puts up $1 billion in cash. Nobody has a billion dollars in cash laying around, so they've made this impossible. Now, keep in mind, 30 bond companies have said no. Why? Think about the bond company that just put up the $90 million bond for Donald Trump. They've publicly said, we're being threatened, we're being harassed, you think those 30 other companies aren't having this same experience? Now, I'm sure uh, Attorney General Letitia James is laughing and having a great time. This is the entire purpose of this fraudulent court case. It is to humiliate Donald Trump, to embarrass him that he doesn't have a billion dollars laying around. But guess what? Most people that plan to vote for Donald Trump also don't have a billion dollars laying around. So nobody is embarrassed for Trump. Now, all of this is to block Trump from having his day in court where he could appeal this to judges that aren't Trump-hating delusional psychopath judges. But they are doing everything they can to make sure he doesn't have the opportunity to appeal himself. This is lawfare if I ever heard of it. Now, late last week, it was also revealed that Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis will be allowed to continue persecuting and prosecuting Donald Trump, despite evidence in the public eye that showed she had a major conflict of interest. Now, the only condition for her to remain on the case was she had to fire her lover, Nathan Wade, her romantic partner and prosecutor. Now, to remedy the situation, Nate Wade resigned just a few hours after the ultimatum was made, and Willis feels like she is saved. But the question remains, is she fully cleared? Well, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp doesn't seem to think so. On March 13th, he signed a bill which appoints an oversight committee with authority to discipline and remove corrupt prosecutors. While he didn't directly name Fonnie Willis, Kemp stated the new legislation will protect the community by holding out-of-touch prosecutors who put politics over public safety accountable. But as of right now, Fonnie Willis is free to prosecute Donald Trump until she's removed. While this seems like a big loss for Trump, legal analyst Jeffrey Lubin-Tubin explained that it's not all bad. 
During an interview on CNN, Lubin Tubin stated, this case is going nowhere. Think about this. There's another racketeering case in Georgia where jury selection, not the trial, jury selection has taken a full year. This case is not going to happen before the election. I mean, CNN is coming right out and saying that all of this is for nothing. Now, here's what Trump's bulldog attorney, Steve Sato, had to say about the ruling. While respecting the court's decision, we believe that the court did not afford appropriate significance to the prosecutorial misconduct of Willis and Wade, including testifying untruthfully about when their personal relationship began. We will use all legal options available as we continue to fight to end this case, which should have uh, should never have been brought in the first place. Now, Steve Sadow uh, has just 10 days to file a pre-trial disqualification review complaint. The judge, Scott McAfee, actually just gave Trump the resources to appeal and win this case after it's over. So the situation in Georgia looks bad, but Fonnie Willis could be removed any day now. And this case will definitely go to the appeals process and Donald Trump will likely win. Now, Democrat leaders are becoming increasingly frustrated that Trump's criminal, criminal trials are being delayed. During an interview on CNN, Representative Adam Schiff pressured the Supreme Court to act fast on deciding if Trump has presidential immunity. Adam Schiff stated, there is a chance that Trump could evade justice by delaying justice. This is a tried and true tactic of Trump throughout his career. And I hope that the courts are aware of exactly what he's doing and his incentive in trying to prolong this. Adam Schiff claimed that if the decision isn't made soon, then this could be evidence that the Supreme Court is deliberately trying to delay his trial until after the election. So on the one hand, you have Adam Schiff who has lied over and over and over again about Donald Trump, pressuring the Supreme Court to lean his direction. On the other hand, he's bad-mouthing them and saying that if they don't rule the way that he wants, that they're in Trump's pocket, that they're in his corner, that they are giving in to help him win the election. So on the one hand, he says, you guys are completely credible. On the other hand, he says, there's no credibility left in the Supreme Court. In a surprise twist, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appeared on CNN to blast Biden and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer for supporting his removal last week. He stated, it's inappropriate to go to a sister democracy and try to replace the elected leadership there. That's something that Israel, the Israeli public, does on its own. We're not a banana republic. I think the only government that we should be working on and to bring down now is the tourist tyranny in Gaza. It's crazy how Biden tries to label himself as pro-democracy while championing the influence of overthrowing the Israeli government. I mean, this is absolutely insane. I mean, Benjamin Netanyahu, for all of his faults, just called the United States what she is, a banana republic. In Russia, President Vladimir Putin has just been reelected with 87% of the vote, a new record. In remarks shortly after he was reelected, Vladimir Putin seemed to indicate that Ukraine is only after a temporary peace deal. Putin stated, we are for peace talks, but not just because the enemy is running out of bullets. If they really seriously want to build peace, good neighborly relations between the two states in the long term, and not simply take a break for rearmaments for 1.5 to 2 years, this seems like classic Washington, D.C. to me. They want ceasefire, but not an end to the war until it meets their self-interest. So basically, he's saying, listen, we are willing to have peace, but not if it's just a, a short-term thing. We want real lasting peace, which means they want NATO to back down. They, they want the United States to back down, and they're willing to stop this war in Ukraine. Will it happen? I don't know. I'm just telling you guys what's in the news. Now, Putin 
has also been defending himself online from allegations that he killed uh, anti-Putin activist Alexei Navalny while in prison. During an interview with NBC, Putin revealed that he was in talks to release Navalny in a prison exchange. These details were then corroborated by a close ally of Navalny, Maria Pevchik, who previously stated Alexei Navalny could have been sitting in my place right now today. This is not a figure of speech. It could and should have happened. Nalvani was supposed to be free in the coming days because he had achieved a decision on his exchange. Now, this is really interesting because the news has been saying that Putin uh, had Nalvani killed, but now over in Russia and even Nalvani's family friends are saying he was about to be released from prison when he died. Now, I'm not saying there wasn't foul play, but it does look like Alexei Nalvani was about to be released. Now, this is my update for today. I want to remind you that you are amazing. Thank you guys so much for joining me here today. It really, really is amazing to have 1.5 million of you seeking the truth, and I'm so grateful to be a part of that. Before you go, please give this video a like because it tells YouTube to spread the word, to spread that truth out to other truth seekers like you and me. Also, hit that subscribe button. We want to get to 1.6 million amazing truth seekers, and I would love to be a part of your life and helping you know the truth. Hey, thank you guys so much. I'm going to put a video somewhere around here. Don't leave YouTube without it. Thank you so much, and I will see you